Hi brothers and sisters in Christ, I hope you are going very well. I'm starting something new now for those of you who have some questions that you are struggling with on your walk with the Lord. So if you go to our website, you can go and submit your questions there. Questions such as this one here, that's basically saying, I once had clarity, but now I'm confused again. So how do I get clarity again? Just simple questions like that, that you might be struggling with and need a few more answers with. So if you fill in that form, you can submit it to us and then we'll go through those questions and prayerfully ask the Lord which ones he wants us to basically release um, on YouTube with some answers to help and support you guys. But it is there for you guys. And then I'll try my best to answer them as frequently as I can time permitted and the Lord permitted, of course. So today we are basically looking at what to do when you had clarity and now you don't have clarity anymore. And you've kind of like asking God, Lord, which way now? Which things can I let go of? Which things do I need to take up on? Because there are so many things that I can do or not do, but I don't have the clarity that I once had. And so if that is you, then this is definitely for you today. So basically the steps that I have taken in my own personal journey to help me regain clarity in times when I had clarity and then confusion came in are basically these four steps. The first thing I do when I once had clarity and then got confusion is I would take a breath, <sighs> a very deep breath when I'm in confusion and don't know which, one to, uh, which way to go. Then I take a step back and I basically look at everything that is in front of me. The things that God has told me to put my hand to, different opportunities that have come that might be a good thing or a God thing, and just everything that is coming my way. And I just take that step back to look at everything that is there as an option. Then what I do next is I basically realign my focus with the Lord. So I spend some time in worship, just spend some time soaking in his presence, focusing on Jesus, just to get my heart and mind quiet again so that I can regain that peace and trust that I have in him so that everything and the noise just dials down. So during this time when I realign and focus on him, I don't think about the opportunities that are in front of me. I don't think about the things that he has taught me to do, nothing. I just focus on him and intimacy until I regain that peace. Once I regain that peace and focus back on Jesus, then I go and I revisit the last point of clarity that I had before the confusion set in. So that might look like something for you, the last thing that God told you to do. So let's say, for example, um, let's just use this now, for example, something new the Lord now has me do. So let's just say I am a bit confused about now taking questions from you guys to release it on YouTube, whereas I might have had clarity before doing that. And so then I would go to my last point of clarity where the Lord said to go and do that. And then I would look at if God gave me anything else later on after that point of clarity. And if that last point of clarity, I didn't receive anything new from the Lord or a different avenue, that last point of clarity would be my starting point where I've now reset my focus to come back to. OK, so that would be the next one. And then fourthly, once I'm back at that last point of clarity, I then pray and I ask the Lord for um, new directions. If he has new directions from that point of clarity and if I need a bit more confirmation, I ask him for confirmation. But what I also do is I pray, I wait and I look in my heart. So what that basically means is after I've prayed, I wait for the answers to come before I take any steps further. Okay, so you draw yourself back to that last point of clarity, pray, ask the Lord for further elaboration or confirmation or different avenues if there are any, and then you wait for the answers. And then you just look in your heart. So you basically shut off your head. You don't overanalyze. You don't think about things like maybe costs involved, things that you need to do, all that kind of stuff. You just look in your heart first to see what is actually tugging on your heartstrings. What is aligned with your purpose, your call, your destiny, and the things that God has previously spoken to you about. Because chances are the point of clarity and where you are going will be aligned with that. Because God speaks to us 
in our hearts and so we basically don't want to get our human reasoning in the way because sometimes confusion will set in when we overthink things too much we can get things like fear intimidation and all of that setting in that make us then doubt our last point of clarity and that is why i say just kind of shut it off pray look in your heart and wait on the lord for those next answers then after that you basically do reflection okay so just a little bit of reflection once you've come back to that last point of clarity basically ask yourself what has god spoken to you about your destiny your calling and also what has he spoken about those things over the years so recently and over the years because the last point of clarity would be that last point where it would have been aligned with your purpose and destiny and calling and that will give you a clear indication as to where you are heading Okay, so that will bring you back to ground zero so that you don't get into that confusion mess. Then reflect on what point did, at what point did the confusion come in? So you now had that point of clarity, but what caused the confusion? Was it your human reasoning, worrying about maybe time or difficulty or resources or some things that might not add up in making it work and then you started doubting it? Or did that confusion come in because you shared your point of clarity with others and then other people had other opinions which then brought you to that point of confusion it is sometimes important to track why the confusion came in the first place so that it doesn't trip you up again so if you can pinpoint where that confusion came in and the source of it it's much easier for you to unpack it and recognize it for what it is and get back to that point of clarity then the next thing is is it fear or doubt hindering you are you yourself holding back and that is why you're not getting for the clarity because you've not done that last point of clarity that God asked you to do because God doesn't give you the next steps or the next map until you have obeyed the last thing he asked you he might sometimes but he doesn't always and so you just need to look at have I disobeyed the Lord or has fear or doubt or things hindered me from actually following through on that last assignment or last instruction he gave me because if I haven't followed through on it, I need to go back and first obey and do that. And then chances are the Lord will give me the next step of clarity. Then are you waiting on God's timing to open the door? So that is another thing for you to reflect on. Because, you know, sometimes it's not a clarity issue. Sometimes it's just a waiting issue. Sometimes you already have the clarity. You know where you're going. God has given you multiple confirmations. But you find yourself being confused because you thought it was your time, but the right doors aren't opening or things aren't moving as you were expecting or wanting. And that might not necessarily be a clarity issue. That can be a timing issue. So it's vital to understand and know that God's timing of putting things in place or opening doors are not necessarily yours. So you don't need to be in confusion if you have clarity. Just wait. Because at the right time, at the right point, God will show the next steps or open the next door. So you don't need to be confused about that. If God wants you to take another step, he will make that very clear to you. So you don't need to be confused in that space. So what steps can you take against future confusion? So write down your vision and make it plain, as it says in Habakkuk 2 verses 2 to 3. Basically, what that does is when God gives you a point of clarity for the next steps, write it down so that you have it in either a notebook or a piece of paper so that you can reflect back on it. Because in moments of confusion, you often forget what God said and you're unclear. But if you've written it down somewhere, you go and you reread it and that truth helps to realign and reset you. So writing it down, having it close by is always handy. And then lean not on your own understanding. And we know that, that when we acknowledge God in all our ways, he will make our way straight. So basically write down your vision, make it plain, then rely not on your own understanding, commit that pathway, that vision to the Lord, and he will make your path straight. And then have patience and wait on the Lord. And that is something we sometimes struggle with the most. Because after you've done that, you've received the vision from the Lord or the word from the Lord, you write it down, then you pray about it, acknowledging him in, these, um, in those ways. Then you have to wait on him to open the doors or lead you to the next thing. And so if you follow these things, it will help cut out that confusion because you know the truth, you know you've committed it to the Lord, and you also know that you need to wait on him.
So I pray that has blessed you. And remember, if you have questions that you would like us to answer, fill in the form on the website and we will endeavor to answer as many as we can. God bless you.